So my name is Vonim Dobrovic, I'm from Zagreb, Croatia. I want to say first thank you for d doing this, organizing this. You know, when we got when I got an email that this is happening, I was like, ah, oh, University of Zagreb, this would never happen. <laughs> you know, um, usually we have to break doors to come in, and we were like, oh, people are inviting us to come normally <laughs> and welcome. Um, so thank you for that. It really means a lot uh, for for the artists to to feel to feel welcome. I also would like to say that a lot of the people performing in the festival are in New York for the first time. Um, that's not the reason why there are not many artists here. They are attacking in the in the theater, and some are still arriving because the festival is starting tomorrow. Um, I, I would like to uh, give a little bit of a context why and why we are here, why we are doing the festival here, and um, uh, what I think the difference is of doing a queer festival in New York and in Croatia. So I started the Queer Zagreb Festival in Croatia 22 years ago, when I was 10. <laughs> um, and um, the, the, now it seems a little bit difficult to understand uh, the situation 20 years ago in a post-socialist country, in a country still burdened with war, with patriarchy, with uh, religion, tradition. So I was one of the first openly gay people in Croatia 22 years ago. Uh, when people were doing interviews with uh, queer people on TV, the, the TV screen was uh, blurred and the voice was changed because people were afraid to, to be out. So I was lucky in a way to have a support system that it didn't matter. So we were building the scene from nothing. Uh, in, you know, I'm basically brilliant in that. <laughs> And I'm always, you know, teasing these young people now coming out and everything. You know, every time they have sex, they should pay commission to me. Because <laughs> it was more difficult before. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding a little bit. What I wanted to do was to create a festival that would talk to the public, to the general public, to the, uh, to the audience, and teach them about being different in one place. And then queerness felt like a great um, uh, frame for that. But we had to redefine queer. We went a little bit further from the traditional reading of queer through the gender or identity um, prism. Because in, uh, in art, sometimes it can be not redundant, but repetitive art that is completely identity-based. So it's uh, oftentimes the same uh, here in New York, in uh, Australia, in uh, Brazil. But when you add the extra definition that we added was that queerness depends on geography, that whatever puts you outside of, uh, in the margin, outside of mainstream society, uh, is queer. And that means that in Brazil, your black body puts you more outside of society than a white gay guy. That in uh, Thailand, the idea of queerness is different than in Belgium. And this is where it becomes interesting in art. So then we said in Croatia, you don't even have to be lesbian to be queer, it's enough to be a single mother. Because mm. in a society burdened with patriarchy, with religion, if you have a child and there is a straight woman but no husband, you know, you're queer. Because everybody's wondering, where is the father? Who is the father? You are a whore, or whatever, you know. So, and this is what we are trying to, uh, to do with the festival. And I think art is an excellent tool for that. And uh, when you add that, then you have an, um, a festival that can have also interesting art. And now when I come, oh, uh, sorry, I'm talking so much. Um, <laughs> now when we come to New York, so after doing the festival in Zagreb for 10 years, I got a little bit restless. Um, and I wanted to test the idea of this uh, queerness that depends on geography in New York. And you know, New York is a place that invented queer art in a sense. But I got a feeling that it was also a bit incestuous. Incense, incest, inc mm. well, incest, no? Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> sister. Uh, um, uh, sorry, my English. Um, uh, in, in terms that you see a lot of the same things, that everybody recognizes uh, queer, in the sense that uh, what everybody can see. So I, I, um, uh, I wrote to a couple of curators in New York and around the States, Look, I'm trying to do the fest queer festival in New York. Can you recommend to me some artists that we could put in the festival from around the US? And everybody, you know, these big curators, everybody suggested the same type of artists, you know, mm. burlesque, drag, something that they would use in their festival from their perspective what is queer. And we also have to understand that usually mainstream curators, 
producers don't go to queer festivals. They don't go to see queer work. They add it on as entertainment after the proper shows in the theater. So they would uh, program that in the clubs. You know, now things change. Of course, queer is everywhere now, and it's difficult uh, not to, to take it more seriously in a sense. But 10 years ago, I was a little bit uh, surprised uh, with, with, with that. And then uh, another, so the festival was going well. One of the artists that even moved here, he just had a great um, run at La Mama, Ivo Dimche from uh, Bulgaria. He has another show next week or in two weeks. Um, uh, why am I saying this? Ah, yes, because for me, what was interesting also, the festival we do in Zagreb is much bigger than the one in New York. Mm. So we, it's incredible, mm. just the number of uh, things we do, it's much cheaper to do things in Croatia, so we could just do more. Um, and then after 10 years of doing the festival in Zagreb, with excellent program, I have to say, after the first year of doing the festival in New York, I was in some village in Sweden, on one network of uh, theater professionals, and somebody was like, ah, I know you, you are doing the festival in New York. Yeah. I'm like, ah, that's the difference. The visibility of New York and the invisibility of everywhere else. Another thing I learned, New York Times for us is a global newspaper impossible to penetrate, but here it's a local paper. You know, they go to one and they see stuff and they review things. So anyway, why I think it's important to, to do this, we are not inviting artists who are maybe very well known, but these are, we've created the frame, so now we can invite artists um, who otherwise might not be invited to New York because, or to the States, because it's just more, you know, the funding system is a bit strange and it just works differently. So the theater, theaters who invite international artists usually invite them when they are very, very famous, they can sell tickets and, you know. So for, for me, for us, it's very important to, to have this frame so that we can bring people who would not get that kind of uh, exposure. And also, from experience, I think the American audiences or New York audiences are very uh, loud, not loud, but very responsive, you know, like, uh, so that kind of reaction is also particular or special, and I think uh, artists um, appreciate that. Of course, everybody is invited, I don't know how this uh, works, there's many feet, six seats in that theater in Skirpol, <laughs> so yes, uh, please come if you can. All the shows are really nice, I can talk a little bit more about the show, I don't know, uh, I'll jump in. Oh, yeah, sorry. This QR code leads yeah. to the whole program. There's oh. shows every night for the next how many days? Until the 17th. Until the 17th. Yes. And we will email you all afterwards with a link to some free tickets uh, available if, if you are definitely going to go check out the shows. So, yeah. So, yeah. maybe we should move on to the next part of the program? Sure. Well, what is the next? What? Oh. It's not me. You can Perfect. Is there anything else that you want to do? No. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>